This sprawling complex is sitting on an expansive lush greenery, fresh grass and bright flowers, and wrapped by the serene ambience of a countryside landscape, could pass easily for one of Nigeria's famous holiday resorts and tour destinations. Perhaps a place to commune restfully with nature and its elements. Or even a prized destination for people seeking an escape from the stress and rigors of work and the pressures of life generally. But it is far from all these. Rather, this expansive mass of real estate is home to the Nigerian Defense Academy, an institution where the officers commissioned into the three services of the respective services of the Nigerian Armed Forces of their choice, namely the Army, Navy and Air Force, are trained. This video is a presentation of the highlights of the making of a military officer at the Nigerian Defense Academy. The package begins from how the Academy invites applications from eligible Nigerians interested in pursuing careers in the Nigerian Armed Forces through the process of selecting candidates who scaled its entrance examination as well as the training program that those who secure the academy's coveted admission must undergo. It is the story of how officer cadets are groomed by the academy to become commissioned military officers who will command soldiers in various operations, uphold the academy's enduring ethos of loyalty and valor, which is its motto, and serve their fatherland with uncommon patriotism. The Nigerian Defense Academy was established on the 4th of January, 1964. Its creation was in response to the needs of Nigeria, which had attained independence from its British colonial masters in 1960, to train the military personnel of the officers' cadre of her armed forces locally. The primary focus of the academy is the training of regular combatant cadet officers. However, it complements this core mandate with the training of cadet officers for short service courses SSC and direct short service courses DSSC, both of which are undertaken as the need of the nation for military officers demands. The DSSC is designed for university graduates seeking commission into the combat support arms or administrative units of the respective services of the armed forces. The vision of the academy is to produce officers with broad-based training in both military and academic subjects designed to serve as a foundation for the future progressive development of officers of the Nigerian Armed Forces, while its mission is to provide each officer cadet with the knowledge, skills, and values necessary to meet the requirements of a military officer through military, academic, and character development. Since its establishment some 48 years ago, the Academy has expectedly witnessed a number of significant changes. During its formative years, the bulk of its military instructors were Indian military personnel. But upon the departure of the last set of Indian military instructors in 1978, the military instructors' personnel of the Academy became fully indigenized and has remained so ever since. At inception, the Academy's training for regular combatant officers was for a period of two and a half years, with one and a half years set aside for academics and the remaining one year devoted for full military training. In 1979, the course duration changed to three years, two of which were devoted to academics and one to full military training. 
The current training program provides for four years of academic studies and one for purely military training. With this review, the academy was transformed into a full-fledged degree awarding military tertiary institution and accredited by the National Universities Commission, NUC. I confer on all of you the degree of Bachelor of Engineering of the Nigerian Defense Academy. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Eligibility for the regular combatant training commission of the NDA was reviewed in 2011 to allow for the training of female officer cadets. Although the DSSC training program had always offered training opportunities for women, female candidates were not considered for the more rigorous regular combatant officer training course of the academy until the 2011 revision of the academy's eligibility requirements. The review was sequel to a directive by the President, Commander-in-Chief Dr. Goodluck Jonathan in December 2010 that equal opportunities be given to the two genders in the enrollment of candidates for the regular combatant course of the academy. <laughs> the academy's process of grooming civilians into becoming strong courageous and erudite subalterns of the Nigerian Armed Forces begins with the placement of advertorials in the print and electronic media to attract eligible Nigerian young males and females who are interested in serving their fatherland in military duties through any of the services of the Armed Forces, namely the Army, Navy and Air Force. The application form to be completed by a candidate seeking admission into the academy is downloaded from its website. The form contains the eight minimum qualification requirements that must be met by all candidates, both males and females. Among the requirements are that the applicant must be a Nigerian citizen. He or she must be not less than 17 years old and not above 21 years old by the 15th of October of the year when the Academy's course being applied for will commence. However, candidates applying for a commission in the Nigerian Air Force must not be older than 18 years. Minimum height requirements are 1.68 meters for male applicants and 1.50 for female. The academic qualification requirements are the same ones stipulated by the NUC for admission into conventional universities. Nigerian Defense Academy entrance exam for 64 regular course, which I want to believe all of you here are ready to write. Yes. Yes. Eligible applicants are required to write a qualifying examination which signals the beginning of the selection process to admit new intakes into the academy. We are going to share the question papers now. You are not to start at what you are told to do so. Is that clear? The academy's qualifying examination, which is in written format, is in two parts. Part one is on the use of English language which is compulsory for all candidates. For part two, applicants are to answer questions on some subjects that test their ability to meet the academic requirements for admission into the three respective faculties of the academy. Records have shown that applicants who skill the academy's qualifying entrance examination are usually no more than 3% of the total number of individuals seeking admission into the institution, which is usually an average of 40,000. The Academy's qualifying entrance examination is therefore clearly the most competitive into any tertiary institution in Nigeria today. One, two, three. 
The few applicants who pass the qualifying examination are thereafter referred to as candidates. Given their total number, particularly in relation to the available vacancies, their screening must continue to enable the Armed Forces Selection Board select the very best to be admitted into the academy. The screening process is structured to enable the figure to be scaled down to the number the academy can admit. Consequently, candidates who passed the academy's entrance examination are invited to an interview session to further prune down their number. This stage of the screening process lasts three weeks during which the candidates are interviewed in batches. However, because the academy attracts very brilliant minds, the interview stage still leaves the institution with more qualified candidates than it can absorb. The screening process, therefore, shifts to its next gear. At that level, the shortlisted candidates report to the academy to face an Armed Forces Selection Board, AFSB, comprising representatives drawn from the Ministry of Defense, Defense Headquarters, the three services of the Nigerian Armed Forces, and the Nigerian Defense Academy. Like its entrance examination, admission into the academy is indeed highly competitive too with the ratio being one candidate selected out of every 120 candidates screened. The AFSB screening, which lasts a number of days, is quite elaborate and is conducted in a most thorough and transparent manner. This is to ensure fairness and that only the best of the very best of the candidates who advanced to this stage secure the highly coveted admission into the academy. After the shortlisted candidates have been documented, the AFSB screening begins with the verification of their academic credentials and age. This is handled by a subcommittee of the AFSB. Candidates found to have fallen short of the minimum requirements are eliminated from the selection process. The next hurdle that shortlisted candidates must scale is a comprehensive medical test. Virtually all the parameters that are necessary to determine the true state of an individual's general health and medical condition are applied. They include comprehensive blood work to determine the state of the vital organs of each candidate and whether he or she is grappling with health issues that could make the candidate unsuitable for the physical and mental rigors of military training. Electrocardiogram ECG, to determine the status of the heart function of each candidate and whether his or her heart is strong enough to endure the sometimes daunting physical challenges of military training. Blood pressure check Evaluation of the state of their vision and dental examination. Other medical evaluations that the candidates undergo are chest x-ray and physical checks such as body mass index BMI which is a measurement of an individual's height in relation to their weight. Only candidates who have been certified medically fit proceed to the next stage of the selection process. Again, the dropped candidates are informed that should they be interested in knowing the medical condition that led to their being eliminated from the screening process, the AFSB would oblige them the information. And that will be done in strict confidentiality too. That again underlines the fairness of the Academy's officer cadets admission process. As further proof of its thorough nature, the screening process to select shortlisted candidates for admission into the Academy does not end with their medical evaluation. 
Next is a series of physical fitness tests, beginning with a 3.2 kilometer race that must be completed in a maximum of 15 minutes. Failure to meet the time results in disqualification. Once again, the candidates are admonished to refrain from exerting themselves beyond their respective natural limits of endurance and also made to realize the dangers of ignoring this piece of invaluable advice. Don't stretch yourself to the point at which you are hurt or you are long to fail. After they have been documented, the candidates are assembled at the starting point of the race. The 3.2 kilometer race is then flagged off at the blast of a whistle, with the female candidates given a head start as a concession to their gender. Here is the finish point of the 3.2 kilometer race. As the candidates sprint towards and into this rendezvous, military personnel manning the gates are under strict instructions to shut them on the dot of 15 minutes from the start of the race. As the expiry of the time allowed for the 3.2 kilometer race, the gate to the ground is shut and those who failed to make it to the finish point within that limit are eliminated. For some, the pain of their near miss is too excruciating to bear. Don't take it as if you have lost everything in life. It's not like that. Most of the time, it's always the best. The arduous qualifying race is over, but not so the screening exercise. Since the true test of a person's physical fitness lies beyond demonstrating their ability to run a race within a stipulated time, the candidates who scaled the 3.2 kilometer race stage of the screening will undergo yet another round of physical fitness tests. This time, they will cross some obstacles of varying dimensions which they must negotiate through different approved methods, both individually and in groups. During this stage of the exercise, inability to negotiate an obstacle smoothly or failure to comply with the don'ts of doing so, such as dropping or landing in prohibited areas or failure to refrain from touching prohibited colors could lead to the disqualification of a candidate depending on the total number of infractions committed. Unlike the ones that candidates do individually, the obstacle crossings done in groups usually present propositions that are daunting and seem near impossible to achieve, just like most critical military tasks. The objective here is to test the character and leadership qualities of the candidates and their ability to successfully work together as a team to tackle difficult tasks. Usually, by the end of the obstacle crossing stage of the AFSB screening, the number of remaining candidates would have reduced sharply. Even so, the number left is still often more than what the academy can admit. So, the screening continues, this time with a fresh round of written tests and oral interviews. At the end of the AFSB screening, the waiting game begins for candidates who made it up to the very end of the selection process as they can only pray and keep hope alive, pending when they receive notification from the academy that they have either been offered admission to enroll at the institution or had been dropped. These are former candidates who scaled all the tough screaming hurdles and have finally been offered admission by the Academy to its 63 regular combatant corps. Having been found worthy of admission to the Academy, they are now officer cadets. Here, standing on the parade ground of the Academy and physically bonded with one another by the touch of the shoulder, and as the cadets in the front row clutched the national flag, the officer cadets of 63 regular corps 
collectively perform the ceremony that formally marks the beginning of their training at the academy. The oath is administered on this site by the Minister of State for Defense, Erelu Olushola Obada. The oath taking affirms the willingness and voluntary commitment of the cadets to abide by the tenets of the military profession which they had elected on their own free will to pursue a career in. The oath is a solemn promise sincerely made by the officer cadets both as individuals and collectively to be a true and faithful allegiance to their fatherland through the President, Commander-in-Chief, as well as an abiding pledge of unflinching loyalty to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. From this moment on, the conduct and behavior of the cadets are governed by relevant sections of the Armed Forces Act as well as the laws of the nation, meaning that they will henceforth be subject to both military and civil laws of the nation. Upon their arrival at the academy to formally enroll for admission, first-timer cadets as fresh cadets are categorized in the academy's military training lingo or 100-level cadets in its academic lingo, are received by an officer of the headquarters, Cadets Brigade, which handles the documentation of new officer cadets and issues kits to them. They are subsequently assigned to the four respective cadets battalions of the academy. These are Abyssinia, distinguished by the green-colored parchment on which the shoulder bars of its cadets are laid, and the color of the t-shirt worn by these cadets of the battalion. Burma, which is color pink, Dalit, brown, and Mogadishu, color red. Having been assigned to their respective battalions, the cadets also joined their seniors in the residential accommodation blocks assigned to each battalion. An accommodation block complex is reserved for female cadets. The wings of the block are assigned in a way that distinguishes the female residents of the four respective battalions from each other, battalion by battalion. The new cadets had remained on the posted strength of the brigade headquarters for five weeks, during which they had undergone an orientation course on military training. This course is designed to break them into the tough regime of life in the military, particularly as most of them lacked any previous military training background. This phase of cadets training at the academy is known as preparatory training. As the cadets shall quickly get to realize, from the date of enrollment till they pass out of the academy, physical training shall remain a very crucial aspect of every cadet's life. Each cadet is therefore expected to be physically fit in order to withstand the rigors of both the academics and military training offered by the NDA. That certainly explains why the academy has what is adjudged as both the best equipped and managed gymnasium in the country today. Here, cadets work out regularly to ensure they are physically fit and that their level of physical fitness is sustained all through the duration of their training course. There are examples of uh, bacteria, you understand? For the academic aspect of their training, the academic branch registers new cadets for four years of studies leading to the award of bachelor's degree at the end of the programs to successful officer cadets considered deserving of the honor. So coveted is the honor of being a judged champion battalion at the academy that cadets of that battalion are distinguished from their colleagues in other battalions with the colors of the parchment on which their shoulder bars are laid, as theirs is a combination of colors red and green, which are the academy colors. As part of the regimen of extracurricular activities at the academy, cadets are also encouraged to take part in various activities to reduce the stress of training. One of such activities is the cadets' regimental band, which now plays at the passing out parade of the academy 
and at its other major functions. Shortly, the band is expected to play major roles in the celebration of key national events. One of the expectations from officer cadets after they are commissioned is a display of high etiquette in the manner they conduct themselves in the various officers' mess of their respective services. To help products of the academy live up to this expectation, activities are organized similar to those that take place in officers' messes with all relevant rules and regulations strictly adhered to. These include periodic regimental dinner nights and other mess activities where cadets interact with officers to share experiences and also learn table etiquettes. For the effective blend of both academic and military training, the academy observes a ratio of 8 to 2 for the first four years of a cadet's training at the institution, except during the first six months when the emphasis is on military training and the ratio is 8 to 2, that is 80% for military training and 20% for academics. In all, that translates to 80% academic and 20% military training. Thus, military training for year 1 to 4 cadets comprises 20% of the total course content. The ratio is reversed to the ratio of 2 to 8 for academic and military training respectively in the final year when the cadets have already graduated, even as their convocation ceremony is yet to be staged. But how really has the academy been able to blend academic and military training in practical terms beyond how it is stated on paper? Here is how. The academic offerings of the academy are provided through three faculties, namely the faculties of engineering, science, as well as arts and social science. The faculty of engineering offers courses leading to the award of bachelor's degree in electrical slash electronics engineering, civil engineering, and mechanical engineering. Faculty of science in physics, chemistry, biological science, mathematics, and computer science, while arts and social sciences produce graduates in history and international studies, geography, economics and management services, languages, French, political science, and defense studies as well as psychology. The academic year of the institution is divided into two semesters. 100 level cadets offer a minimum of 15 credit units per semester, while cadets in year 2 to 4 offer a minimum of 18 credit units per semester. The minimum total credit units required for graduation for cadets in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences is 132 while 150 is the minimum for cadets of the faculties of science as well as engineering. Final year cadets, already regarded as degree holders but yet to be ceremonially awarded certificates, offer courses such as current affairs, typing, computer appreciation to make up the 20% academic requirement of their program in the fifth year. For the theoretical aspect of their military training, cadets receive lectures the same way they do during the academic phase. However, military knowledge and skills are imported to the academy services wing rather than the faculties. The services wing comprise the Army, Navy, and Air Force wings, each of which stands on its own. During this period of training, the cadets receive lectures and subjects that are common to the three services, which all the cadets must attend, as well as in subjects that are peculiar to each service, which are attended by only cadets of the respective services.
The subjects categorized as common to service are drill, which is commonly referred to as marching by the civil populace. Physical and health education, equitation, weapons training, map reading, general service knowledge, signal communication, computer appreciation, French, and typing. The subjects categorized as peculiar to each service are further classified into major subjects, otherwise known as majors or minor subjects, also known as minors, depending on their relative importance. For the peculiar to service subjects, the outline for each service is as follows. For the Nigerian Army, the majors are map reading, and navigation. Individual field craft, while the third is tactical training. Minors are signals communication, service writing, and military law. For the Nigerian Navy, majors are navigation, seamanship, rules of the road, and flashing semaphore. Minors are communication, divisional duties, and nuclear, biological slash chemical damage control firefighting. The Air Force's peculiar to service subjects are all majors, and they are air navigation, aerodynamics, air traffic services, ATS, and meteorology. The undergarage, as it's referred to, is where the landing gears are fixed. For the military training of cadets, the curriculum of the academy is designed on a year-by-year -year basis. In the first year, all cadets offer common to service subjects which were earlier mentioned. These subjects are essentially used as channels to introduce the cadets to the three services of the Nigerian Armed Forces. Taking the subjects together also fosters esprit de corps and comradeship, which extend beyond their years at the academy as a uniting force during their military careers, even while serving in different services. Now to the practical aspect of military training at the academy. As part of their practical military training, first-year cadets are expected to attend several outdoor exercises. These include one-day map reading, communication, as well as tactical exercises. In addition, the cadets also participate in two major exercises in their first year. The exercises are nicknamed Camp Initial and Camp Ozavesi. Military training for cadets in their year two is similar to that of the first year. The only difference being that the scope of the tactical exercise is broader, while an additional exercise of more robust intensity, known as a Camp Highland exercise, is included in the package. The Camp Highland exercise lasts for three weeks and it is the final tactical exercise for the fifth year Army cadets. During this exercise, cadets are exposed to simulated battlefield situations and conditions. The exercise also involves the firing of live ammunition from various weapons on selected targets, including firing from attack helicopters usually provided by the Nigerian Air Force. The participation of all second-year cadets in Camp Highland exercise is meant to reinforce the importance of joint operations between the three services of the armed forces to the naval and the Air Force cadets who will not have an opportunity of partaking in an exercise of that magnitude in their final year when they shall be attached to units of the services they have enrolled for.
In addition to taking common to service subjects, cadets also attend military training in their respective wings in their third year of training. During this third year, army cadets do not attend any major camp. However, one-day outdoor exercises which are similar to those staged for first and second year cadets are conducted for them. Fourth year cadets continue with military training in their respective wings. The army cadets attend one-day tactical exercise where they conduct patrols and ambushes. Map reading and communication exercises similar to those of the preceding years are also conducted. The only major camp attended by army cadets at this level is a one-week tactical exercise nicknamed Camp Farauta. This is held jointly with Year 1 cadets. To prepare cadets for the contemporary challenges of dealing with terrorism and insurgencies, the practical aspect of the military training of the academy has been broadened to include training in counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency. These programs began in 2011 and are undertaken at the Counter-Terrorism and Counter-Insurgency Training Center, JAJI. The program includes helicopter rappelling, during which cadets are trained on how troops are inserted into enemy territory for commando and special forces operations to rescue kidnapped victims and storm an objective to achieve assigned operational tasks. Also, as part of its training program, the Academy holds various competitions for cadets during each training year. The competitions help to inculcate in the cadets the spirit of sportsmanship necessary for character formation as leaders, develop their skills and endurance potentials, impart a competitive spirit necessary for success in the military profession, determine the champion battalion at the end of each year, and finally, serve as outlets for recreation for both cadets and staff of the academy. Events competed for are classified as major and minor. Major events include cross-country race, drill, highland, obstacle course, shooting, as well as exercises conducted at camps initial, Farauta, and Highland, during which the participating battalions are scored. The events classified in the minor category include athletics, football, boxing, which is for both male and female cadets, basketball, table tennis, swimming, and volleyball. The four cadet battalions of the academy compete at these events. The one with the highest aggregate score at the end of each training year is a judged champion. The champion battalion is rewarded by being presented with the academy champion banner, which it retains and proudly displays throughout that training year. Perhaps, the high point of the Academy's commitment to the moral development of its cadets is the code of honor it inculcates in them. In fact, a handbook, Code of Honor, 
is issued to cadets on arrival at the academy. The Code of Honor spells out in unequivocal terms the standards of behavior expected of officers and cadets at all times. It demands ensuring that one is guided by higher ideals in his conduct and interaction with others. The Code of Honor for Cadets stipulates that an officer cadet will not lie, cheat, steal, nor tolerate anyone who indulges in these vices. Physical contact by way of brutality is inconsistent with the character of a gentleman officer cadet. If this code is flouted, it is a sure path to an unceremonious exit from the academy for the offending cadet. Personal qualities of officer cadets are utmost. There are six guiding principles in this code of honor. These are Express your views without fear or favor. Be proud of yourself but do not be naughty. Be open-minded or receptive to others. Do not tell or listen to lies or gossips about others. Do not compromise your honesty or integrity. Do not misuse privileges. To complement their formal and informal trainings and further broaden their knowledge, tours are organized for cadets to visit military formations and schools as well as important defense-related industries or corporations. Naval and Air Force cadets, beginning from their third year, visit their respective formations and schools to familiarize themselves with activities in their chosen arms of service. The Army cadets undertake tours slash visits in the final year of training. Notable tour destinations for the Army cadets include the headquarters of all combat arms slash schools of the Nigerian Army, with the exception of the Signals School. Nigerian Army and Nigerian Air Force formations in Kaduna and Makurdi, which the Army cadets visit with Air Force cadets, the Defense Industries Corporation of Nigeria, Kaduna, and the Kaduna Refinery and Petrochemical Company. The fifth year is the final year of training for regular combatant cadets. During this period, only the Army cadets remain fully in the Academy for military training. In addition to the usual one-day exercises they attend, the following major camps are also conducted for the Army cadets. Camp Farauta, Camp Kura, Pre-Camp Highland, and Camp Highland proper. For their final year training, the Navy cadets proceed to the Nigerian Naval College, NNC, Onura from where they are posted to different units of the Nigerian Navy for practical training. On their part, Air Force cadets receive their final year training at the Nigerian Air Force Base, Kaduna. Today, we are going to talk about aircraft systems. Here, they undergo practical courses in aviation, while those who have shown aptitude for flying are introduced to primary flying training. The Naval and Air Force cadets return to the permanent site of the academy for their passing out activities at the end of their one year of practical training. At the end of the five-year rigorous regular combatant training course, the final year cadets of the Army, Navy and Air Force are judged to have met the stiff requirements 
and standards in character development and learning for commission into the Nigerian Armed Forces are honored in a program featuring a series of events. The most significant of these events take place on the last day of the program. They include a passing out parade, otherwise known as POP, a convocation ceremony during which the graduating officer cadets take the first step towards their commissioning by being conferred with their degrees and awarded their certificates. The formal commissioning of the erstwhile cadet officers into the services of the Nigerian Armed Forces of their choice and the administering of the Oath of Allegiance on the newly commissioned officers. The passing out parade for cadets of the academy, particularly its regular competent courses, is usually reviewed by the president, commander-in-chief. It is a day when cadets of the academy display their unusual mastery of drills to the awe, delight and rapturous applauses of invited guests. The formal commencement of the passing out parade of the academy is preceded by the arrival of the president, commander-in-chief or his representative. On arrival at the academy's main gate, the president inspects a quarter guard mounted in his honor. Afterwards, the president's motorcade is escorted into the main complex of the academy by a colorful detachment of cadets on horsebacks. At the parade ground of the academy, the president sets the ball rolling by reviewing the parade. After the president is through with reviewing the parade, the cadets treat the audience to a colorful and enthralling drill. All the elements that signpost a scintillating parade, smartness, precision of steps, briskness, symmetric movements and more are vividly on display at all of the academy's passing out parades, leaving most spectators to wonder if the cadets are indeed humans or programmed devices responding to the stimulus of electronic controls. Next, special awards are presented to deserving cadets by the President. The passing out parade ends with the cadets on parade marching out of the ground, thus setting the stage for the next event, which is the convocation ceremony. After the convocation ceremony, the graduating cadets are presented with the fruits of their academic surgeon at the Nigerian Defense Academy as they are conferred with their respective degrees. The formal conferment of degree on graduating cadets is succeeded by the presentation of certificates to them. Having been rewarded with the benefits of their academic endeavors, it now remains for the cadets to harvest that of their military training. Shortly, that longed-for moment of glory and fulfillment unfolds as they are pronounced commissioned officers of the respective services of the Nigerian Armed Forces of their choice. The transformation in the status of the newly commissioned officers is reinforced, that is, the five bars which adorned their shoulder up till a moment ago give way 
to those of the entry ranks of regular combatant officers freshly commissioned into the three services of the Nigerian Armed Forces, second lieutenant, in the case of the Nigerian Army, sub-lieutenant for officers proceeding to the Navy, and pilot officer for those commissioned into the Air Force. The officers are decorated with their ranks by the person or persons of their choice. The lessons of the training that cadets receive at the academy are rich and diverse. In a five-year program during which many fell by the wayside and dropped out of the training, these cadets who held their own and forged on to cross the finish line showed that whatever success and victory were to be achieved, there is invariably a way to the attainment of those goals once there is a will to triumph. Indeed, it is only he who dares that wins, as demonstrated by the exceptional ability and forbearance of these officers to surmount the rigorous and sometimes daunting military training they had undergone at the academy. It is believed that for as long as it continues to receive the support it requires to discharge its mandates robustly from appropriate political and military authorities, and inasmuch as its selection process for admitting cadets remains transparent as it has always been, the three services of the Nigerian Armed Forces and the nation can continue to count on the Nigerian Defense Academy to produce for and provide them with officers of outstanding quality in terms of valor and character who shall eternally uphold the oath of allegiance they had sworn to and forever remain loyal to their fatherland, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that much confidence in the ability of the Academy to do just that was expressed by none other than the President, Commander-in-Chief Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, in his address at the 22nd Convocation Ceremony of the Institution in September 2011. I believe that NTA is one institution that Nigerians hope that if we really go to the moon, this may be the center. I say so because from the antecedents of this institution, you are people who, who can truly say that you are qualified for your degrees by character and by learning.